this lecture will discuss the topic of managing resources, and this is going to entail managing costs and budgets, care delivery systems, staffing and scheduling, and selecting, developing, and evaluating staff. Before we start reviewing the management of resources, let me go over the objectives of today's session. So by the end of this session, you should be able to identify the budget preparation process for healthcare organizations. So the real gross domestic product is an important indicator to track because it provides the greatest and broadest sectorial detail of any other series. Data reflect income as well as expenditure flows. Sectoral coverage includes durable and non-durable goods, structures, and services. Also, price data by sector are available for detailed subcomponents. Because of the detail available in the gross domestic product reports, this series provides comprehensive information on supply and demand conditions, including information for various types of developing imbalances over the business cycle. Why do we need to care about the gross domestic product? Well, in 1999, 13% of this gross domestic product was spent on health care. In 2010, that percentage rose to 17%. As the percentage of the gross domestic product that is spent on healthcare rises, the more likely that others, those external to healthcare, will want to fix the situation. So the gross domestic product suggests that we must be engaged actively in helping to change the healthcare system. Do we get what we pay for? With these facts, it is clear that we are not receiving high value for the amount of money spent on, high, on health care. Among the top factors increasing health care costs are price inflation, administrative inefficiency, unnecessary care, and pharmaceutical usages. Price inflation is caused by many factors, including the rates with which physicians' incomes rise, which is greater than the average earnings increases. Because consumers go through a third party for payment for much of their care, they are, in a sense, insulated from the actual price of the health care goods and services. Administrative inefficiencies are largely related to the number of clerical personnel it takes to process reimbursement from multiple payers. Some healthcare leaders advocate eliminating insurance and thus the middleman so that people are dealing directly with each other rather than through a third party that influences the choice of actual practices and payments of services. U.S. hospitals spend an average of 20% of their budgets on billing administration. Unnecessary care includes using the hospital emergency room when a clinic service would suffice as well as ineffective medical procedures, some of which were selected because of public or consumer pressure. Pharmaceutical usage has increased, and as pharmaceutical companies have marketed their products directly to consumers, they are asking for the latest medications and thus pushing costs up. Part D of Medicare further complicates the scenario due to confusing and complex plans for coverage of medications. Our societal attitude of the quick fix supports using medications rather than other strategies that take time and dedication. The four key sources for healthcare financing are government, private insurance companies, individuals, and others. As you can see, the government, primarily through Medicare and Medicaid programs, pay the most as a single source. Private insurance companies, while paying more of the overall percentage, are composed of numerous individual businesses. Almost 75% of the government spending is at the federal level. Because the government pays such a large percentage, you can see how the summons for Medicare and Medicaid greatly influence what happens in health care. The primary payer of health insurance is Medicare. Part A covers organizational services such as hospitals and home health. Part B, which is optional, provides for health care provider payments, medical equipment, and diagnostic tests. 
In 2006, Part D, the Drug Benefit Program, went into effect. Medicaid is a state-level program with costs shared between the state and the federal government. The funding from the federal level is dependent on the per capita income of the state. In addition to covering the medically indigent, which are who the public usually thinks of as being the targets of this program, Medicaid also covers persons with disabilities. Charges are the cost of providing a service plus a markup for profit. Usual and customary is the term that means third-party payers have surveyed providers in the area to establish what the payer will pay. So a hospital could tack on a markup and not necessarily receive it because it far exceeds the usual and customary charge. Cost-based reimbursement calculates all allowable costs and then uses that as the basis for payment. Each payer determines what the allowable costs are. Both of these approaches have been largely replaced by payer fee schedules. Flat rate reimbursement is based on the payer deciding in advance what the payment will be. If the costs are greater, the provider absorbs the cost. If the costs are less, the provider benefits. Capitated payments are based on the provision of specified services to an individual over a set period, such as one year. The capitation, or per head per person fee, is set, and the desire to provide needed care at the lowest cost possible while meeting the standards for quality. So managed care is a health plan that brings together the delivery and financing function into one entity. The goal is to decrease unnecessary services, thereby decreasing costs. Healthcare financing and nursing, we know that each affects the other, and we know that we need to know how to talk in terms of value to care our skills that nurses need to know in order to be financially savvy. So what does this mean for nursing? It means several things. We must think of our practice within a context of organizational viability and quality of care. We must be able to do financial thinking. We must think of our services in terms of value-added patients. We must exercise cost-conscious nursing practices, including capturing all costs. We must focus on patient needs, not on provider needs or organizational practices. We must provide evidence-based practices for the public we serve. We must incorporate and evaluate new technologies. And we must research to better our practices and using this research for evidence-based practices. 